Hello everybody. Um, it, we are going to start a new unit in this video. Um, the name of the unit is Exponential and Logarithmic Functions. Uh, from Math 1 you've seen exponential functions. But the logarithmic function is something different. We're not going to start it in this video, but we, we may mention it. Um, it turns out the logarith logarithm or the logarithmic function is the inverse of the exponential. And I can show you why that matters. So let me get started and do some uh, basic introduction stuff here in this video. Um, and I guess the first thing here is to talk about what is an exponential function. And it's very basic, guys. You already know a lot of this. Probably just need to be refreshed. An exponential function um, is of the form f of x equals a to the x. The a here is called the base. The base is what's raised to the power. Okay, um, let me be clear about that. Um, there's a couple things that I would mention. And one of them is if you have an exponential function, um, I don't know, f of x equals 3 times 2 to the x, this is the base. 2 is what's being raised to the power. 3 is just multiplying to something after, like if you did f of 2, whether it be 3 times 2 to the 2, and you'd get 3 times 4, which is 12. You could never multiply these together and call it 6 to the x. Don't do something like that. Okay, just making that real clear. In this, in this definition, they left off that additional number that could be in, uh, as a multiplier. Um, and it says for an a not equal to 1, well, if it's raised, it, 1 to any power is itself, so you wouldn't have an exponential growth. The domain of an exponential function is always all real numbers. This will be important in the logarithmic piece. The range of f is 0 to infinity, also important in the logarithmic piece, because like I said a minute ago, remember if he's got an inverse as a log, his range is the log's domain and vice versa. So that'll become an important piece to, to understand. And I, and I, I took a screenshot of a Desmos graph um, to show you how these graphs look. This is called exponential growth. I actually put in 2 to the x power is what that is. And you can see here um, what, what I've defined to be if the base, A, that's that number right here, if it's greater than 1, you get what's called exponential growth. If A lives between 0 and 1, not including either side, 0 or 1, you get what's called a decay. And that's the general shape that you'll get. And I, I put on here the y-intercept is at um, 0, 1. Okay, um, back up to here for just a second. Um, if I wanted to talk about that for a minute, I, I put one in my calculator, and there's another thing about this that we got to define here. And I said, note both parent functions, and I call these the parents, a to the x. You can think of it as 2 to the x as the parent if you want to. I said, both parent functions have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And I wanted to talk about that just for a minute. We can look at a graph of it in a Maybe go to the calculator to, to see it. Um, it. Must be in that one, though. No, it's in that one. Got it. Okay, so this is the graph of y equals 2 to the x. Right, this is 2 to the x. There's the graph. There's the table, which I've already got it on that other side. You can see it right here. But what's important is notice here. And what they call this horizontal asymptote is as as x goes as x gets negative values, negative one, we get one half, negative two, that's one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth, and so on. You'll notice that y, the output or f of x, approaches zero. We're getting really small numbers already right here. Um, but the question is, does it get to zero? I mean, it looks like I'm getting closer and closer, right? And, and that comes down to this question right here. If I said to solve this equation, 2 to what power gives us a 0? And that says, okay, well, we know if we increase x to be positives, that's just going to make this number bigger, right? 2 to the 2 is 4. 2 to the 3 is 8. 2 to the... Now, if we start getting negative exponents, or even a 0 exponent, that gives us a 1. And 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. 
and you'll see that the whole the progression just keeps getting smaller but does it get to zero and the fact is it doesn't now some people in this understood like some courses that essentially as um, X goes to negative infinity they would say that F approaches zero or gets to zero so this asymptote is is describing the behavior of F as X goes in a certain direction so they, they would say this as X goes to negative infinity F approaches zero right that's that horizontal asymptote see it in the graph right here X is going to negative infinity F approaches zero it's called a horizontal asymptote there are functions with vertical asymptotes and we'll talk about them later but I wanted to point that one out for now all right I'm not gonna make a huge deal out of it in this video I just wanted to point that out as an introduction piece all right you've seen these before in math one all right exponential growth and then the formulas look like this if now if we go in back up here and look it says anything anytime a is greater than one it's growth well Usually in application problems, they define it like this, 1 plus r, which is a rate, raised to the t power. All right, um, a of t is the output, and in this case, it's defined as some amount, amount of something after some time. p, the multiplier, is some initial amount, what you start with, and we talked about this before. Um, the rate... I wrote as a decimal. It is just a rate, but you can't use, if they said 15%, you can't use 15 in this formula. You'd have to use 0.15. Okay? And time, t is time. Decay looks a lot like that. It's um, exactly the same formula, only it's 1 minus r. Notice that any rate you get, this will become less than 1. Okay? That's why it will become exponential decay. All right? So growth is greater than 1, decay less than 1. Let's look at a couple of examples to wrap this video up. And um, I'm going to do, well, it's not, these are kind of like examples. They're just considerations. We'll do a real example in um, another video. It says consider the function b of t equals 2,500 um, times 0 0.075 to the t power. All right. Um, that models the number of bacteria found in so, a sample after t minutes. The question is right here, what is the initial amount? In other words, how many bacteria did I start with? And that number is living right here in the front. So we started with 2,500. Right? What's the rate? Can we find this rate? Well, you can. And it's easier than you might suspect at first. Think about it now. This rate lives inside here. We know that it's growth, right? So I'm going to write that in here. This is growth. And the rate is whatever is going over 1. So if I subtract this, whatever amount is larger than 1. So if I subtract 1 from this number, I find my rate. Okay, so to do that, I guess I could use my calculator to show you, you could use one too if you wanted to. So, oh, I did the wrong clear. Uh, second quit. Okay, so I would say 1.075 minus 1. And you get 0 0.075, which we should have known. And then we need to move the decimal appropriately to get your rate. And it would be what, 7.5%, you could report it like that, but that wouldn't be the way you would be able to use it in a problem. And the time element is in your problem, right? It says minutes. That's important, guys. You have to be careful when you're reading these things, okay? So all of that is just looking at the, the essential components that you can see from the problem before you even begin. You haven't done anything heavy duty, no big time questions, just analyzing, right? And I want to take a look at one more in this video. And this one says, um, consider the function v of t, and it's um, defined right here. You can see it yourself. It says that the, this models the value of a particular piece of farm equipment t years after its purchase. All right? Now, 
the, how much was paid for the vehicle. Um, you can see it living right here in front. It was $54,000, um, I'm assuming. I did, it doesn't specify, but I'm going to jump into that. And uh, They paid this much for it, right? Just living right out front, initial amount. The rate, okay, is this decay or growth, right? Is this farm equipment going up in value or down? Well, this right here is less than one. So this is absolutely decay. And the question becomes, how much? What amount of decay is this? Well, we know that this was the, the rate was subtracted from 1, right? We could look at it like that. So we could say that to find this rate, oops, well, I could do it that way. I might say 1 minus 0.85, right? And that gives me the 0.15. So the rate was actually 15%. So that's the way that one can be done. All right, so we're going to put that in here. It's decaying at a rate of 15%. Now the question is how often? And there's the answer right there. It's in years. So 15% per year. And this is just us analyzing these and their bare sort of the bare bones, what the function's got ought to offer. Without doing a lot of complicated calculations, you can kind of see some of it right out of the gate. Anyway, I'm going to go and put one more video in under this um, title of um, Intro to Exponential Functions, and what we'll do is a couple problems from Delta Math, okay? All right, so thanks for watching, um, and we'll see you in the next one.